It has been one of the most speculated stocks in the Nasdaq over the recent years. Some have said that it might be the next Tesla. Most people believe that it might do well now, but it's eventually going to burst. Regardless, this is one of the most speculated stocks in the stock market in the recent years. As one of the heavyweights in the burgeoning industry, Lucid is also one of the few companies actually having a product. As time went on, the stock's price action, along with the investors' hype and hopes, went through some huge roller coasters, and some are still wondering if it's time to jump in this bandwagon. In today's video, we will look at Lucid and to see if the company still deserves to have a place in our portfolio. If you appreciate my content, please consider to drop a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Also, please check out the links in the description below, as every help is greatly appreciated. So, regarding Lucid over the past few days, things have been relatively better over time, and more importantly, I think that the fact that it went back above $8 is really good. $8 is a psychologically significant level for many people who want to buy the stock. And also, um, we should remember that Lucid remains one of the heavyweights in that sector. In that sector, they're US bound, they have a product, they have like enough uh, track record showing that they're not a scam. So there are fundamental reasons why you want to buy Lucid. Um, the current price, I would say that, yes, the bottom has likely been met. So I wouldn't be too surprised if like the $7.50 remains a very hard bottom and it's very difficult to pierce through. Um, with that being said, the, like, the journey going back above $10 is also like, if anything, more significant, okay, because 10 other than being a psychologically significant level, it's also the level when like CCIV uh, became lucid. So this is why it's very important to remember that we should always um, keep in mind like what kind of approach we want to have with a stock. With lucid, I think that the best approach would be to buy it for long-term investment and with the assumption that they're going to go, they're going to get larger in time. Are you going to get the bottom of things? Probably not. But then again, you don't have to, right? You don't have to reach the bottom in order to make a quick buck or in this case, a slow buck. So overall, Lucid has been dipping for quite a while now since back in 2022. But even then, um, I would say that it still has a long road ahead of it. So yeah, overall, I think that this is a decent stock to start looking into and uh, to find maybe an entry point. Lucid is an EV manufacturer that is poised to shake up the industry with the cutting edge technology and designs. While other EV companies have been making strides in the industry, Lucent Motors stands out with its advanced battery technology, aerodynamic designs, and commitment for sustainable business model. So, in addition to the advanced technology and design, Lucid is also committed to sustainable business model by using the renewable energy sources to power the production facilities and wants to reduce its environmental impact throughout the life cycle of their vehicles. This commitment is what separates the company from other competitors, in my opinion. Another factor that makes Lucent Motors standing out is the focus on luxury segment. The company's first vehicle, Lucent Air, is a vehicle that is spacious and comfortable, coming with advanced drivers, assistance systems, and many other luxury features. When we look at the long-term tendencies of lucid price action, it's not hard to see that the bubble that gave so much hope to traders around the world is now bursted. The market is no longer willing to blindly follow the latest hype, because on one hand, the market doesn't want to persist on believing that a beautifully made PowerPoint is better than a good financial report. On the other hand, it cannot afford to sustain the trend when supply chain issues doubt over flagship companies within the sector, 
conflicts around the world, higher interest rates, and a looming recession have already been plaguing the real economy out there and also the narrative. The market has long predicted that there will be a bearish market after such a prolonged bull market and that most stakeholders believe that it's going to be a rough patch for the next couple of years. The market peaked twice in the past and if the first peak was caused by pure hype, the second one was triggered by the rollout of actual products. Lucid remains a company that has investment value in the years to come. The main question in everyone's mind is when should they enter in the stock? The long grind to lower price levels is likely caused by the market trends rather than the company fundamentals. So in that sense, things are not as alarming as they may seem. On the other hand, we should remember that sometimes, even if those grinds don't have an actual fundamental reasons, they may still last for a very long time and bring the price to very low levels. Hylions and Paysafe are excellent examples in that case. Lucid had a strong financial performance in 2022. The company reported revenues of about $200 million in Q3 of 2022, a significant increase from just $232,000 of revenue in Q3 of 2021. This strong revenue growth was driven by the launch of Lucid Air, the company's first vehicle, which began deliveries in late 2021. The Lucid Air is a luxury electric vehicle that has been well received by consumers and that has helped establishing the company's reputation as a major player in the sector. Currently, they still have a negative net income, mostly caused by the fixed costs and other operating expenses that should be absorbed once the volume starts to pick up. Overall, Lucid's financial figures paint the picture of a company that is growing its operations but lacks a little bit in discipline and cost control, needing to scale up the operations to start having positive cash flows. Now, let's also cover the shareholder composition in Lucid, because this is a very important factor to determine if the company is better for trading or investing. Lucid is currently held by the institutional buyers, for the most part, at more than 70% of the total float. This suggests that the price volatility of Lucid will be lower than other growth stocks, mostly owned by retails. The reason why this might be the case is because institutional shareholders have far more diversified portfolio and can afford to wait, so they don't mind the short-term volatilities. They also tend to stay in for a longer period of time, which is also a good sign for those of us who want to stay for the long run. Some key behavioral differences between institutional and retail shareholders include their investment horizon and also their level of involvement in the corporate governance. In other words, institutional shareholders tend to behave as if they own the company for real, that they are the ones deciding what is going to be the company's decisions, whereas the retailers tend to just behave as speculators. We come in and we aim to make more money than when we first entered in the stock. And this is the end of it. They don't see necessarily like the potentials of the money that there is to make five to 10 years from now. Whereas people managing other people's money can sometimes have this kind of opportunity to wait. The short interest of Lucid has been increasing in recent weeks, meaning an increasing number of investors are wondering whether it's a good time to sell the stock. Short sellers borrow the shares from brokers and then they dump it in the market, hoping to buy them back later at a lower price and making the profit from the difference. In the case of Lucid, there is a significant amount of short selling, but in my opinion, it's not sufficiently significant to say that there is a concerted short operation going on against Lucid. So I would say that this has to be put as a secondary reason at most. It's important to note that the short interest may not guarantee a short squeeze, but nevertheless, it's a metric worth monitoring. It's also worth mentioning that people shorting the stock often have a good reason doing so, and that a short squeeze may not happen regardless of how many stars are being aligned. So I would recommend regarding Lucid to keep an eye on the stock and to start considering to enter in now so that you can benefit from like a relatively cheap price and a potential recovery. 
Now, no one can know for sure when the recovery is going to happen, but we have to start positioning our positions and our exposures in different areas at some point. Now is a, in my opinion, a decent point because um, the stock has went down by a lot already. So the probability that it goes down is relatively lower. And also, um, Lucid does have like a significant amount of backing behind it, right? So it's not because it's no longer reaching like $40, $50 that automatically um, things are not going to be like that for the foreseeable future. On the other hand, we have to be ready to wait for a long period of time. Like, for example, are you willing to wait two or three years before seeing the fruits of your investment? If the answer is yes, then yeah, I, I would say that by all means, Lucid is a decent stock for you. Now, usually with this kind of stock, I wouldn't um, put in like a hard limit on how much money I would recommend you to, to risk. But I would say that generally speaking, try to keep it around 3 to 5% of your portfolio. 